again for your patience working through all that stuff down there. Your top three tonight, Chad Boat, Corey Cruzman, Dave Darlin, and uh, the pretty ladies behind them, no need introduction. Here we go. <laughs> Chad, what does it mean to get that win finally? Oh, you know, it's uh, it's really special. You know, I've been coming here for seven years and I've made the A1, so every other year has been a disappointment for sure. Um, you know, what a great car, though. You know, John Loss and my dad came together. And, you know, after Turkey Night, we decided we'd put, to, put a car together and uh, see what we could do, and it's, uh, it's I think it's going to be something special for me. I noticed you ran low early on, and after one of those restarts, you moved up high. Did you feel like you needed to change the yeah, well, I knew the bottom was definitely going away, and it's hard to know exactly where the person behind you is. I thought I saw Dave once out of the corner of my eye, so when the yellow came out, he, uh, my dad pointed to me that Dave was running up high, so I figured I'd just take his line away and uh, make him pass me the harder way around the bottom. Apparently worked. Yeah, well, you're talking about that. Thank you, buddy. Is it working? There's one to like there somewhere. We're streaming. Cyber World can hear it. You're broadcasting out in the parking lot. Yeah, right. What do you need? Pick up here. Corey, there are races that uh, you've obviously been a winner here, and it's always great to win. But there are races in which you're pretty pleased with your effort to get up to second and third and work off the guard to get to that spot. Yeah, really, I was. I was. No. You know, we went out in the heat race, and I ran into the fence and tore the ladder off, and we went out in the qualifier. And don't ask me what the hell I did there. <laughs> Turned it over, ripped the battery out of it, and, and I mean, we had every break we could possibly get. Uh, I got to pull one twice and work on it and go back out and still in second. So, I mean, yeah, you know, I've said a uh, hundred times sitting at this table, if you don't have chili cold luck, you know, you're just one of the other 200. We started eight, then I just took some patience, and the racetrack laid itself out, and a lot of stuff just fell my way. So, uh, you know, the, the most important thing that everybody forgets is you can't win the deal if you're not in it. So uh, first, second, or third, we always want to be, uh, you know, first. But just to be in it is pretty exciting. Corey, what's going through your head for a while there? You really had no place to go. You had two cars down in position for quite a few laps. If I, I think I was learning some new curse words, you know. It, uh, <laughs> it just seemed like they were uh, running the same speed, and then I would make my mind up and go with the guy on the top. And, all right, we'd get going and get going, and then the bottom guys start going faster. So it was just, uh, I knew that the guy on the bottom just needed one little mistake and we could momentum around him, or if the guy on the top made a mistake, we were right back next to him. So I just ended up following the guy on the top, and uh, then they both made a mistake, and I was able to actually split them getting into turn one, and uh, just had my eyes closed and hooked up, and away we went, so it worked out pretty good. Today you had a late restart, and I mean, a lot of us are wondering what kind of move you're going to make on Chad and if you can get the win. And suddenly you find yourself in a position in danger for, you know, being in the top three. <laughs> That'd be a little bit nerve wracking for you. Yeah, it got to be a good question there on the last lap whether they were going to finish in the top three. So uh, somebody was under me there for, you know, for the third spot too after Corey. Give me that dirty slide job. Give me. <laughs> There's a dirty slide job? Uh, uh, well, California. You might, have, you might have learned that off of me. I <laughs> but but uh, no, we uh, had a good race car early. And, you know, as Chad was saying, the bottom was really good early, but uh, I went ahead and got away from it pretty quick because you know everybody else was down there, and I was running forward and just was trying to. Uh, Tried to gain something, so I went up to the top early, and uh, it worked pretty well. I was able to get up to second around the top around some guys, and then uh, you know a couple of late restarts, like you mentioned, I was trying to to see how I could get an advantage on Chad, but never was able to. The, the one before the last, I went low and tried to catch that moisture off the bottom, and that didn't really work out well. And the second, the last one, I followed him around the top on the off the four, and that didn't work any better. So, so uh, anyway, he was just better and. Had, ran a good race and we had a good car early and it just kind of went away on me as the race went. So. Chad, are you superstitious? Uh, no, no superstition. Because okay. I, I was watching you earlier tonight that you weren't in your car a lot of times when they pushed it over in line. You walked over and, and I just wondered if it was, uh, if you did that for a reason. No, you know, I just kind of get anxious in the car, you know. With the B-Mains, you never know how long they're going to go. Glass, so, right. Yeah, I just get in I'm sure does the same thing, but they say it's because I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, when you look at your dad's career, obviously there was a little bit of a break there. Many of them knew when he was young, and then a big turnaround is when he hooked up with John Wilson. And now here you are with John. Yeah, you know, it's definitely uh, it's quite the coincidence, really. Um, you know, John has always been a, you know, a key factor in what, everything my dad did, and then uh, 
you know, he gave me my first midget when I first started. Uh, you know, they traded out something for a whole midget. Um, but, uh, you know, John's definitely been, uh, you know, a big factor in my racing career. And then uh, hopefully he'll be here tomorrow. He said if we ran good and we're starting in the first two rows, he'd come. So we're going to hold to it. So when did you start racing? I started racing when I was five, but I ran my first midget race when, uh, I guess I can tell everyone now when I was 11. <laughs> Dave, when do you start? Sorry? Dave, when do you start? When did I start? Oh. When I was five also, a hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Corey. Well, Corey? I think I got into a race car until I was like uh, 19. <laughs> you were old, man. Yeah. I'm really old now. <laughs> Chad, how old were you when you ran your first Chili Bowl? Uh, I was 13. I think 2006 was my first one. So you want to believe about that either? Uh, no, his grandfather did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that went up with him. I want to know more about the superstition, so me and Darwin can work on it. <laughs> but it is interesting when you think about it. You know, all of us that are fans are going to go through this. You know, we see generations come through it. In your case, I mean, in the YouTube guys, you raised with his father a lot. And then you must do a double take when you look all of a sudden. There's this kid up there running up front, and you can take it on the West Coast. It was really funny. I, I ran a, a micro sprint race last year, and it's the first time I ever ran one. I knew the kid that was going to be fast time, and he was out like second. He went like a 13 flat. And I went out and went a 13-3 about four cars after him. I thought, man, I'm going to be pretty good. So pulled in the infield, and the next car was a 13-1, the next one was a 13 one, <laughs> and I'm 33rd. <laughs> So, you know, it's definitely changed to younger people, you know, and I think it's great. I mean, you know, look how far he's gone, you know. I mean, me and Dave still run a midget sprint cars, our love's there, you know, but we never never was able to go that much further. He's already running stock cars, and, you know, he's got to do a lot of other stuff, and, you know, look at this phenomenon of Kyle Larson. I mean, the kid's absolutely incredible. I think he should run tomorrow without a steering wheel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just really neat because, you know, as Dave probably attested, and even Billy, when, when we started, they didn't want anybody 16. They didn't want anybody right. 18. They, they wanted to make sure you were old enough and mature, and then all of a sudden... That's because they were running micros at 6 and 7 yeah, years old. Yeah, you're here. right. You're right. So it, it's pretty awesome to see the kids doing the stuff that they're doing. It, it, makes, uh, it makes me excited that maybe the sport's going to live on. Well, the, the kids are exciting, but I got to tell you, there's a lot of us that really like uh, you old timers as well. Oh, oh, start saying there's a spot up here in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get out of the junior class. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, you, uh, I was talking just Robin Norris down, and I made the comment that we even reference. You've been so close to winning this whole thing a number of times. So uh, you've seen the Swindells, you've seen. You've seen what Kyle's done. You've seen these guys. Assess your chances. Do you think your chances are, are pretty good? Do you think they're good? Well, yeah, my chances are good. You know, we're in the A main is right. is the you know a good start. But you know, with both Swindell starting on the front row, it's definitely going to be a challenge. And you know, Chad was great tonight. And there's lots of good race cars out there, and uh, it's going to be tough. But uh, anybody can do it from any starting spot. You know, if the racetrack's right, your car's right, you can uh, advance up pretty well. Before he said he started eighth tonight. And the racetrack tonight was about as hard to pass on as uh, any of them can be. But, you know, my chances are, you know, I'd say as good as some, not as good as some. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're in the AMA, and that's, that's a good start. We're happy about that feeling at this right now. So. What's the furthest anybody's come? I think Billy King's 13th. There was uh, a beach beach where, where, beach where, beach where, where, thirteen. Not a beach where he's car. I think it's C. Yeah, yeah. 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 How do you get patient out there, Court? How do you, you get, get patient? patient? Oh, it's easy when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> just hope it's old. just, you know what, the fortunate thing is, is being able to sit at this table before and kind of know how the turn events can happen. You know, it's uh, one of those things that you're going to get in traffic. When you're going to get in traffic, everything's going to change. And uh, everybody's so excited and pushing all the time that you end up getting a lot of crashes, even in some of the top guys. You know, there's only so much room for us to go. And, just making sure that your car's maneuverable and being able to, uh, you know, maneuver around some of that stuff, I think, is a, a big key to it. And our car just kind of got better with shocks and set up. And so, will the car come to you? Um, 
I don't know how much it changed, but yeah, we were able to tune it a little bit with the shocks, and you know maybe these guys were a little bit better at the start, and we were a little better at the end. I don't know. So uh, some of the stuff was just dumb luck for them and great luck for me. Chad, you were so dominant in your heat race. Did you make many changes to your car between the heat and the A? Oh, well, I think you always got to keep up with the track. That was the one thing we concentrated on was, uh, you know, making sure we were tight enough where I could, uh, you know, go forward, have a lot of forward drive, but also maneuverable, like Corey was mentioning, because that's a big key here. You got to be able to move around from the top and the bottom. So. Well, that, that's something Sammy addressed the other night about when you're starting on the pole, kind of being, he was felt he was a little conservative because you don't know whether you're going to be on the top or the bottom, and you can't really set for one because you'll, you'll never be able to run the other. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's exactly right. <laughs> but uh, you know, we just made it where I could run the bottom and the top. You know, that's really the first time we've come here and had a car that will just I can crank left and it just rolls the bottom. I mean, it rolls the bottom better than any car I've ever had. So uh, you know, I think that will be a big key tomorrow. Kevin won it on the bottom last year. He went on the year on the top the year before, so you don't really know what you're going to get. You just kind of got to study the track, do the best you can on your car setup, and then uh, rip. Chad, do you prefer a long green run tomorrow night or uh, break it up? Um, I wouldn't mind breaking it up because I think, you know, in our super shocks, the shocks Brian built us, we have a lot of adjustment and we can make our car a lot better. Um, under green, it's hard for me to get down there and adjust them just because I don't want to screw up my line on the next entry. So, uh, you know, I'm sure Dave and Corey have no problem doing that, but, uh, you know. don't even have shock adjusters. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, in the next 24 hours. I'm what, sorry? In the next 24 hours, what are you going to do? Go to McDonald's and go home and sleep. No, no nerves, no nothing? No, I don't think so. I mean, we probably always have something at this kind of race, but, you know, you do it as much as we do now. It's second nature, like you picking up a camera. You know, you're not worried you're going to miss the shot or, you know, so um, for us, you know, it's pretty exciting because I got three other cars here, so I get to kind of work on it. So if I was going to have nerves build up or something, I get to take some of that aggression or tinkering uh, and go do that kind of stuff. and. With the chili bowl, what I think's made it so famous is there the people can come up and talk to you. So you always got somebody to talk to tomorrow. You don't go back and micromanage. <laughs> you don't go back and micromanage your car. I'm going with I'm sorry. You don't go back and micromanage your car. Do I go back and micromanage yeah, my car? Yeah, just every nut and bolt and um well I don't. They don't let me have tools, so they, uh, you know, they will tonight. Uh, you know, they got a, a spreadsheet that they have to cover every night and you know, there's certain things we'll have to change just going in tomorrow knowing what the racetrack's going to do. Uh, so they'll go back and they'll work on it and fix all the other stuff I tore up. And I'll kind of concentrate with the other drivers and kind of live through them a little bit. Dave, this race over the years, there have been a variety of tricks and trick cars. And, you know, whether those produce advantages or not, it's always up for the question. So today, I just happened to ask Kyle Larson, what did you think about the square kill thing? And what he said was, it makes it harder to spin somebody out. <laughs> yeah. Do you believe that to be true? And in a race like that, is that a true advantage? Well, you know, the, the square bumpers and tail tanks are harder to spin out. I'd say, you know, the, the pointed bumper is a lot easier to catch and move a guy out of your way. But, you know, not that I would do that. But, <laughs> but it's, not yeah. the that once, have you? Maybe once. <laughs> Did I do it to you once? I'm just thinking about that, that shitty sledge I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 yeah. I would do anything that it takes to uh, gain a spot <laughs> to, you know, to a certain point. <laughs> Moving a guy with a bumper is not uh, illegal in some, in some not form of racing. Yes. <laughs> I think it's an advantage running something square. It's hard to get up on and get close to him. Right. But heck, we can't get close to him anyway. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 you think about it when following a car straight it's not as big of a deal but when you turn it sideways how much closer it is to their tires now our front tires become closer to their rear tires so I think it's a definite advantage if, if that's what your technique is going to be is going to turn somebody around but usually uh, I don't know too many people have been that close to me. Dave your car stayed under you all night? Your car stayed under you all night? Well you know we got loose there towards the end and you know, it was very good early and then uh, and when the track slickened off, and it was, you, know, you had just had to hit the right spot. And if I hit it right, we was good. If we, if, if I didn't, I, I was, uh, you know, hoping to uh, put together the last couple of good laps right there and try to do something with Chad, but wasn't able to get her done. But, but you know, we had a good car most of the night and most of the uh, 
week so far, what little we did before tonight, but um, I'm pretty happy with my team and my situations. It did me a good job so far. So the child labor laws there were uh, handing you your helmet when you went out for warm-ups. I mean, you're breaking them in early. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, what little time I've got with the fikes, they've, uh, they've worked hard for me and they've been a good situation. That was cute. Talk about your grandson. Before we wrap up tonight, I know we have a very proud dad sitting right back in the back, and I will ask if he has any comments that he would like to throw out at this time. Comments? <laughs> no, I, I'm just very proud of him. He did a good job. He did a hell of a job. He's got big plans for tonight, he tells us. <laughs> well, well, said something about one. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, so, so, so what did you do the night you won? <laughs> <laughs> Happens at the chili bowl. <laughs> okay, are you, are you done, Court? Okay. Dave's done. Dave's done with his beer, so we need to get yeah. this. <laughs>